if God was to pick up a pen today and write the Church of America a letter, what would he write? How far are we missing it? What have we gotten wrong? What have we gotten right? Does it look like he wanted it to look like? Are we doing it the way he wanted to do it? If church, if God could pick up a pen and write the church a letter, what would it look like? Hey guys, this is Pastor Tommy. Thanks for joining us today at the church at Bushland. Man, we pray that your faith will be encouraged and inspired from today's message. Well, good to see each of you. Uh, this morning, I want to say a big welcome to our church online. Thank you for being with us. Uh, you're so faithful. We love you, and you are a part of our church. You are the church, and we love you for that. I want to say also thank you to Cade, who stepped in last week. He and Mark uh, back here for communion. I want to thank them for their leadership in that, and grateful to the church. We can take the church to the mountains, but we can still have church in here. Amen. So uh, good to see each of you this morning, and grateful that you're here this morning. Um, so if you've been with us at all this fall, I've, I've, I've had a, a series about the church uh, in two halves. We just finished the first half called The Church Defined. Uh, we looked at what God meant when he set up the church, when he saved us, when he called us into a spiritual family, when he birthed us into the house of the Lord. And, and we looked at that. The second half that I'll start this morning is we simply want to look at the church as it is today, as it moves forward today. The church in this crazy world today. Many of us wanted God to come back and get the church during COVID and all that stuff, but God didn't come back and get it. And he left it here. And we're on point. We're on purpose. God put us here for such a time as this. And we have to figure out what God wants of his church what God meant for the church, what, what, what God has in, in, in mind for the church as it goes forward because we're walking into a world that is in desperate need of the church. It just doesn't know it, but it needs, this world needs the church to be the church that God set up, not just in name only. And so we'll to look at that. And so I titled the message this morning to the church in America. Flanked on my left and my right are two of the greatest documents ever, ever, ever written. The Ten Commandments written by God. The Constitution or the Bill of Rights written by God. You say, well, man wrote that. <laughs> oh, bless your heart. <laughs> man didn't write that. Yes, man picked up God's pen for a little bit under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit led by God and penned these words for sure. And they cannot, anything God writes, here's what you do not do. You never erase it and you never change it. You get up under it. And when you have your story written by God, the greatest thing you can do is never take the pen out of God's hand when he writes your story. You just let him write. And God wrote these and these, and it's who we are. This, my friend, I can tell you this right now. This right here came from the church. These men worshiped in church, were led by God and the Holy Spirit to pen this. And this is what our nation was founded on. And I'm telling you right now, those were God-fearing church-going men that did that. Promise you. So to the church in America... If God was to pick up a pen today and write the Church of America a letter, what would he write? How far are we missing it? What have we gotten wrong? What have we gotten right? Does it look like he wanted it to look like? Are we doing it the way he wanted to do it? If church, if God could pick up a pen and write the church a letter, what would it look like? Some questions for you. Has God ever nudged you to do something? Has he? You know, it's when it's, you know when it's God. You know when it's bad pizza. That nudge is different. But you know when it's God, amen. Has God ever invited you to join him? It's a dangerous invite but a heck of a ride. 
Have you ever heard God call your name? You see, when your mom says your name, you know what that means. But when God calls your name, that's a whole different thing. To all those three questions, I ask you this. What was your response when it happened? What was your response? They fit in three categories every time. Did you ignore him? Did you ignore him? Did you make excuses? Or did you say yes? You didn't know what you were saying yes to, but you said yes because you knew him and you trusted him. See, you either ignore him, you either make excuses, or you say yes. I want you to go to your Bible. I want you to see a word to the church from Moses. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy 30, don't go New Testament looking for that. That won't be there. Deuteronomy chapter 30, look at verse 15. Follow with me through the word. Verse 15. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commands, decrees, and laws. And then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are inheriting to possess. But if your heart turns away and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away and you bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing, the Jordan, entering to possess. Verse 19, this day I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you, that you have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Now church, choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice and hold fast to him. For the Lord is life and he will give you many years in the land that he swore to give your fathers. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What a powerful word, powerful word to the church. I wanna take you back a little bit to another church. For many of us in the room, we don't really know much about this church. We know about it, but we don't know that much. Probably we're not there. The church the German church in the 1930s, it found itself in a very interesting spot. Hitler was in power and the Nazis were running rampant and they were hunting down Jews. Evil, evil with a capital E, had invaded the country and was out of control. Evil knocked on the door of the church in Germany. The response and the answer that the church gave has haunted Germany to this day. Has haunted it. The German church in the 1930s was silent, silent in the face of evil that had invaded its country. Silent. In the Old Testament, God sent prophets to call people of God to actually be people of God. Not by name only, but by the way they lived. Once you listen to that, God sent prophets. God wasn't enough. He sent prophets to tell God's people to be God's people. Not just by name, mm -mm, by the way you live. One such prophet in 1930s was a gentleman by the name of Dietrich Bonhoeffner. 
He was a voice, young, but a voice. He's 21 years old and he's working on his doctorate and he's gonna write a paper. And he wrote a paper entitled, What is the Church? See, he couldn't figure out while well, all this evil running rampant in Germany and all these incredible, beautiful, large, full churches, why nobody behind the stained glass was doing anything about what was going on outside. He made this statement. To be silent. Hmm. To be silent in the face of evil is evil itself. Woo. Let that crawl on you a little bit. 21 years old. To be silent in the face of evil is evil itself. He said, where is the church? Where is the church? I can't be the only one seeing this. And all he got was silence. And 18 years after he wrote that paper, his dissertation, the Nazis gunned him down. Why? Because he wasn't silent. That's why. Because he dared to say, church, where you at? People of God. When are you going to be the people of God? Not only by name, but in how you live. His blood was on our hands on Calvary. Their blood's on our hands today. Where you at, church? He dripped blood for us on Calvary. How dare us not even want to get dirty today? He kept saying, where's the church, man? To be silent in the face of evil. Ooh, it's evil itself. I want you to go to 1 Kings. I want you to see another prophet trying to get God's people <laughs> to be God's people. Mount Carmel, or Caramel, as you find it. Mark, this was a big battle. Uh, Baal had his prophets, and they've assembled in 1 Kings 18. It's an incredible story. I'm only gonna take you to one verse. Uh, you can read it this afternoon if you want to. I mean, it's good, okay? There's a lot in it. You can unpack a ton. So he says, Call the people of Israel, God's people together. And Baal brought all his prophets. And he assembles them. And then he steps forward and he says this in verse 21. 1 Kings 18, 21. Elijah went before the people and said, how long will you waver between two opinions. If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. I want you to see the response of the church. But the people said nothing. Mm. The silence in the church in 1930 did it begin there? No. Unfortunately, there were times even before that when God's people were silent in the face of evil. How long will you waver, church, between two opinions? If God is who he says he is, follow him. And if the world is everything you think it is, then follow it. 
But the people said nothing. So the church in America in the 2020s finds itself in a very interesting spot. Hmm. Evil has invaded our country and is out of control. Evil has knocked on the door of the American church for a response. And my friends, let me tell you that the answer the church gives could haunt America forever and ever and ever. So the question is, church in America, what will your response be in the face of evil that has invaded your country? The parallels of the German church in the 1930s and the church today, whoo, we're right there. To be silent in the face of evil is silent. Mm. So the answer for many churches today is silence. For the sake of keeping a parking lot full and the money up, we'll be all things to all people, but nothing to our God. Silence is always and will always be agreement. Not to stand is to stand. Not to speak is to speak. Not to decide is to decide. Silence is always agreement. In the junior high lunch table, laughing at a dirty joke, even as adults trying to run a country. Silence. Woo. It's always agreement. So you might be wondering, how did we get there? How did the church in America get there? Why are, we, why are we silent? Some have traced it back to the 60s, 1960, the United States Supreme Court took prayer out of public schools. Didn't seem like much at the time. Never does. Trust me, the German church in the 1930s didn't think it'd ever get to where it got. Kind of like the frog in a tank of water and you turn the temperature up one degree every day. Frog doesn't think the temperature changes, but before long, that sucker's boiled. You know, you can never take prayer out of a public school, honestly, because as long as they're a born-again child of the king, third graders walking into that school, they can pray their pants off for their teacher, their students, their friends, their coaches, their principals, their administration, and nobody, nobody, nobody can stop that little third grader from praying down heaven. So you can't take it out of school. You might cut it off from a public setting, but you can't take it out. In the 1980s and the 1990s, if you were alive, you remember words like this, the moral majority and the religious right. You know what they said then? You churches are too loud. Y'all being way too political about stuff. Y'all need to go back into your little churches behind your stained glass and be real quiet. You know what the church did? Just what the world said. It went just like a little church mice back into that church and it got real quiet. Mm. Church can never get quiet. So the church retreated and some of the religious leaders of the time said, maybe we should spend more time on the theological and religious issues, more time on the gospel and stay out of the business of all the politics and policies and all the stuff that's going on out there. Let's just focus on inside the church. We'll just decide and talk about and have some conferences about all the theological differences and religious issues. And we'll do it all for the sake of the gospel. It didn't work out too good. Thomas Jefferson, in a speech, 
He gave, he said, the walls of separation between the government and the church. They have misconstrued that for years. They manipulated that, the church and state. See, that's what they always want to raise that flag first. Oh, this is a separation of church and state. Well, if you, if you look at the separation of church and state is to keep the government from having one religion and forcing everybody into that, China. The separation of church and state got way, way out of bounds. It, it, instead of being a, a wall that separated the government from the church, it became a place where the government can stick its fingers and its nose in every church in America and tell it what it's going to do, how it's going to do it, and where it's going to do it. It's so funny, not funny, but it is interesting that we send our kids to school and they, te- they take uh, classes or conferences and they, we teach our children, don't bully, but we grow up as adults and bully other people. It sends a real weird message to our kids. That's what that is. 1954, then Senator Lyndon Johnson introduced this, the Johnson Mandate. You know what the Johnson Mandate is? He sent it to the tax, the United States Tax Code. It's still there today. It says that any church or religious nonprofit entity that speaks out or speaks for a, 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 a certain uh, politician or party or issue they would revoke the tax-exempt form for the church, meaning that everyone who gave and made contributions to the church, you couldn't write that off on your taxes anymore. So what that did was, that was in their way of quieting the church by taking the money away and letting the church just dissolve out. That's called bullying. But that's how he did it, to quiet the church. And we're all too familiar with all the stuff during covid the churches during, the, during COVID was seen as non-essential. Now, don't get me wrong. COVID was a real deal. And our health professionals and nurses and doctors did a tremendous job with it because we were navigating water we had never been on. And so they asked churches to close and said they're non-essential. So we shut down churches. Now, after a while, it didn't get past the smell test. And so many churches opened back up. But during the time the churches were closed, here's what's very interesting in our country. The marijuana dispensaries, wide open. Casinos, wide open. They shut churches down, why? So you wouldn't have large gatherings. You ever been in a casino? You ever been in a slot machine? There's a bunch of old people lining up and they mean they hit you with purses and all kind of stuff if you put a quarter in their machine. They opened them all up. Guess what else was open during that time when churches were seen as non-essential? Strip clubs. Yeah, that'll help you get through COVID, and sure. What the heck, man? And you know what we did as churches? We just went right back into our little church and we just minded our own business and we didn't stick our nose where it wasn't needed. And that was a test to see what the church would do. The church minded really well. All of this and more under the headlines for the sake of the gospel. For the sake of the gospel. Well, we don't wanna, we don't wanna offend them and we don't wanna make them mad because we might, we might, you know, we might wanna share the Lord with them or they might wanna come to our churches. So for the sake of the gospel, let's not, let's not speak truth. No, let, let, no, they could just find their way to Jesus. They don't find a way to Jesus, find a way to Hollywood and become weirder than they are where they left. They don't find Jesus that way. Find Jesus when you love them enough to go to them and share truth with them. So the church in America, during this time, it pulled back. Why? Because the church couldn't handle the criticism. They couldn't handle it. And for the sake of keeping parking lots full of money up, they just became a thousand things to a thousand people and really you become nothing to no one church got soft, got very weak. Like I like to say, they became a wet pretzel. Just folded, man. Got walked on for the sake of the gospel. The church in America, what it really has is an identity problem. If it got whose it is, right, 
who it is and whose it is. That's what it forgot. See, for us as individuals, we're on a constant search to find out who we are. You know when we find out who we are? When we get saved. When you get born again and Jesus comes and lives inside of you, now you're in Christ. When you're in Christ, you know who you are. You know whose you are and who you are. A church that understand whose it is always will know who it is. The church has an identity problem. It don't know whose it is. It's listening to a whole bunch of stuff and not listening to the head of the church. Not listening to the one who died for the church. Not, not listening to the one coming back to get the church. It's not trying to do anything to glorify God. It's just trying to keep the church happy so we keep the parking lot full and tell everybody they're great people. They are great people because they're made in the image of God, all right? But apart from Christ, we're nothing. We're a mess. And we'll mess stuff up. And what the church needs is to understand whose it is, all right? It belongs to him. And we need to be representing him in everything that we do. So the church in Germany, they said, just go to your church, just sing. And when you sing, just sing louder. Just sing some more. Just stay behind the stained glass windows and sing and sing and sing. And while they were singing, the boxcars were going right down the railroad tracks. Stuff full of Jews headed to gas plants and headed to, to prison camps. And what did the church do? Did he peek out the window and see what he could do? No. He just kept singing. Sing louder, they said. Sing louder. Don't worry about all that stuff going on out there. Don't worry about all that. It doesn't concern you. Just focus on God. Just focus on God. Just focus on the gospel. Like focusing on God and focusing on the gospel doesn't bleed out. Amen? The gospel bleeds out. When you get born again, you bleed out. He bled for us. We, they, but they, we gotta see them bleeding. We gotta bleed for them. We gotta bleed for the ones, the babies that are aborted, that have no voice. We gotta be their voice. With all this sex trafficking going on, and Lord knows how deep that runs. The church gotta be quiet on that? No, no. Biblical marriage? Yeah, is one way. Narrow is the way, broad is the road. One way, biblical marriage. These are the things the church has got to get right, and it's got to stand for stuff. Because there's a good old country western song that says, if you don't stand for something, you fall for anything. And I'm not saying country western music's anointed, but I am saying that's a good word right there. <laughs> Some of y'all are going to say, it is anointed, all right? What I'm saying is, that's the church today. That's the church that God is going to breathe on moving forward. A church that aligns itself on the word of God and Jesus Christ is, is the church, the head of the church, and it goes with God. Yeah, is it dark out there? You bet it's dark. But are we light? We are light. Does this world need to be salted? You bet it needs to be salted. And we got the shaker, baby. You better start the shaking because your popcorn tastes like cardboard until you put some salt on it. I'm just telling y'all. I know it's not healthy to put a lot of salt on it, but it tastes like cardboard until you put salt on it. I'm just to wake it up, all right? Church got to wake up. It's got to wake up. My job's not only to focus on God and pretend that, that everything outside of the church is not worth fighting for. Oh, it's worth fighting for because God made it. And it's made in the image of God. So to the church in America... When evil comes and knocks on your door, what will be your response? You knew I was gonna come back to those questions. If you haven't realized it, if you're still asleep, God bless you, but you gotta wake up because evil is knocking on the church. You know what he wants? He wants to know what the response of the church is gonna be. You gonna stay in here? You gonna ignore him? You gonna ignore God? You gonna ignore the knocks? You gonna ignore him? Are you gonna make excuses? Well, Jeff, it's kinda messy. <laughs> so was Calvary. So was my life before Christ. Glad he didn't worry about my mess and he invaded it. Amen.
You gonna ignore the call, the knock, church? Are you gonna make excuses? Are you gonna say yes? You said, Jeff, we don't even know what we're saying yes to. Oh, we know. He's God. It's God. It's God's church. Was before we were hatched and we'll be after we're gone. It's his church. So to the church in America, wake up. To the church in America, speak up. To the church in America, stand up. To the church in America, get up and get in the fight. We might wake up one day and wish we could go to church. There won't be no churches because they will become non-essential and they will shut them all down. Psalm 9710 says this, that those who love the Lord hate evil for he guards the lives of his faithful ones and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. You say, pastor, why are you picking a fight? Why are you poking the bear? I'm not poking the bear. I'm trying to wake up the lion. Amen. I'm not trying to poke the bear. Oh, but I am trying to wake up the lion of Judah. Wake up, church. It's knocking at our door. And it, it, it demands a response. And to be silent is agreement. You can't be silent. It's knocking on your house, too. It wants to come sit at your dinner table, too. Mom and dad... Silence Mm -mm. is agreement. To be silent, my friends, in the face of evil is evil itself. Mm. I'm going to invite you to stay in church. As the worship team comes, those of you on the ministry team, you come as well. Again, church, I am not poking the bear, but I guarantee you I am trying to wake up a lion. I am. If we don't wake up, our history might be like Germany. Joshua said these words. Mm. Is serving the Lord is undesirable or tough? Then choose yourself this day whom you're going to serve. But for as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. If serving the Lord is undesirable or hard or difficult, then sigh for yourself this day whom you're going to serve. But as for me and my church, me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to serve the Lord. Father, we love you. We praise you. We adore you. We magnify you. We thank you. God, you've been so good to us. Don't let us fall asleep at the wheel, man. Wake us up, God. Wake us up. Not everybody's good. Wake us up as a nation. We were founded for more than this. We were built on the Word of God. Men and women gave their life to give us what we've got. Religious liberty, the right to assemble. And God, it mattered to them and it should matter to us. Wake us up, God. Holy Spirit, do what you got to do in your church and draw whom you want to draw. Holy Spirit, right now, in Christ's name, amen, amen.
Hey, thanks for joining us today here at the Church at Bushland online. Hey, if you were inspired by today's message, we'd love to hear from you. Just drop a message in the comments or you could email us at info at the church at bushland.com. We'd love to hear what God's doing in your life. Also, man, if there's anything we could agree for in prayer with you guys, just text the word pray to 806-557-1800. We believe there's power in agreement um, with the Lord. And so um, if we could pray for you, just do that for us. Um, and if you'd like to connect further with us through social media, uh, just search the church at Bushland. You can find out more things that are coming up here um, and get involved that way. And then if you'd like to plan a visit, uh, we'd love to see you face to face. We have services here, 9 a.m., 1030 a.m. every Sunday. You can go to our website, thechurchatbushland.com and plan that visit. And we look forward to meeting you that way. Finally, man, just thanks again for joining us. Pray your faith was encouraged and we look forward to journeying with you in the days ahead. So have a blessed day.